Uh, we are here with Trevor Quoker, who's the CEO of Aristocrat, a company that um, has just had an extraordinary run. I, I remember when Aristocrat was this small company with penny slots and this thing called video games and little obscure Indian casinos in the American Southwest. And today you are the industry's leading games technology company and investors know it. Your stock price continues to hit new highs. It's been up 50% in just the past year. You have a market cap of $35 billion. And when you've had that much success over such a long period of time, the natural question, I think, is what can you continue that? Yeah, well, thanks, Frank. And it's great to see you again and uh, appreciate the question. I think we've had this question in every year now for a number of years. <laughs> and. Uh, I'd probably go back and say, for, you know, the last 10 years we've had this sustainable growth trajectory and it comes down to really about incredible content, great culture and great capability. And we continue to come back to those fundamentals, which are things that we absolutely control. And from our perspective, you know, we look at that and we say every time we challenge and go into a new market or create a new business, it actually creates new opportunity, which then increases our opportunity and our talent pool, a talent pool, but also target markets. And I, just have a look at um, you know the way we've grown through North America, and even that's whilst it's a great growth profile, there's still so much growth left in North America for this company. There's markets out there where we still don't have our fair share, which is great opportunity to grow into, and there's new and emerging verticals that we can grow into. And we've made the acquisition of Neo Games, gives us access to the iGaming market, but that's just one part of it. Not to mention the geographical opportunities outside for our gaming business and just the great strength of our class three premium business, our class two tribal business. And like I said, there's a lot more opportunity out there for Aristocrat. Um, so I feel very comfortable about having a chat to you next year and the year after and the year after again about how we continue to grow um, because we see lots of growth out there. That's great. One of the things that we see in the gaming industry, and it's true of all industries of course, is the accelerating pace of change of technology. Uh, the buzzword for the past year in uh, virtually every industry now is um, artificial intelligence, for example, even though I think that's just simply further enhancing supercomputing. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you deal with this advancing technology at Aristocrat and how you see it playing out in the gaming industry. Yeah, it's a great question. Well, first of all, I think every business has got to address AI. It, uh, it's not unique to gaming, it's not unique to aristocrat. Every business is going to have to address AI. So we've taken a pragmatic approach to ensuring that we think about where AI can actually help. And it's really around helping making better decisions, it's helping doing better analysts, and it's helped in taking away the work that takes up a lot of time, but doesn't create a lot of value. So it allows our team to focus on the things that are about growing the organisation, the things that are about creating new ideas and expanding in the organisation. I think you know, AI, in our minds, is still something that we continue to monitor. Um, we're very strict the way the w around the way we operate with AI. And obviously things like IP and patents, etc. we make sure that they're fully protected um, through a, a rigorous process in the way that we use AI in the business and also the way that we use, um, the organisation uses it as a way of growing our organisation at the same time. You had mentioned a minute ago about uh, culture. Mm -hmm. and, and we know having a distinct culture uh, has always been important, or for a long time has been important at Aristocrat. Uh, and we know part of that is sustainability and that you would like to talk about sustainability. So the floor is yours, Mr. Quirker. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Well, we, you know, we believe in sustainable industries and sustainable business. And certainly the work around climate, the work around responsible gaming, and the work around diversity are topical at the moment, but they're also important. And they're also important, um, they're important things that we need to do as a company and we need to do as an industry. And we, we need to be part of the solution with governments and regulators. You know, our perspective on this is that you know, those are important to our stakeholders. It makes us a better partner to our customers. It makes us a more attractive place for people to work. And it gives us a more sustainable business in the future. And we believe that industry needs to own this and needs to lead on it. So a lot of people will ask, well, how does that translate into dollars and cents? Do you have a, an example that you can cite? Well, I think uh, the, the way, I, I don't 
talk about absolute dollars and cents, but we're obviously going through all the scoping programs and all that sort of stuff. And what we're seeing is it's forcing us to be a better company. And it's starting to look at what are the things in our supply chain, what are the things that we're investing in. And it's, it's having a look at what's the power consumption of an electronic gaming machine. How can we improve that power consumption for an electronic gaming machine while still offering the same player experience? And we're using those sorts of examples. And it's, it's actually very exciting to see what is coming out of the organisation. Our new LVIC manufacturing plant out here at Henderson, which we just opened in July, it's got a great recycling program for all of the different components. And you can see the benefits that we're accruing and saving from the trash removal that was going out into other people's trash by condensing, by consolidating uh, that work. So haven't got absolute dollars and cents, but it's going to come over time and it's going to be the companies that get on the front foot. Uh, you have grown, um, in addition to organically, you have also grown through acquisition over the years. And one of your more interesting acquisition was uh, the aforementioned Neo Games, the uh, I lottery uh, technology company. T tell us about that. Yeah, it's been a great acquisition for us and very, very excited. We're, we're obviously still at early days, even though it was announced over a year ago. We've now been working with the Neo Games team actively as part of Aristocrat as the Aristocrat Interactive team since May. Um, you know, it's really bringing their great platform and technology together with our content, long standing customer relationships, and our regulatory position. And we see this as an opportunity to take great content and leverage it ar around the world. So if I give you some examples, you know, iLottery, it's a very interesting business and they've got a great position, particularly in North America in iLottery and also in Europe. But the ability to have our brands in the iLottery marketplaces, uh, the ability for our content to be on the Play distribution network, the opportunities for the PAM and integrated PAM with uh, content technology and all of the backend systems for a PAM, uh, including wallets and, and other assets. And then finally, you know, we're currently working on the mobile on-premise product, which is a product for our tribal customers. Uh, and that product, again, is another innovation that allows our customers to benefit from our content and our investment in technology. And that said, they're a great talented group of people. You know, this is a business that started from ground up and has grown to be a scale business. And we're very excited about continuing to scale it. The, um, we're at G2E where everybody wants to see the newest and best products. What are some of the must-see products at your booth this year? Right, I'm only going to stick to a couple. So first one is the Baron cabinet. So that's a brand new cabinet that's coming out, 27-inch dual screen, 4K high definition with integrated lights. Looks fantastic, so we're very excited about that and they'll be released just after the show. The, the second one is um, Phoenix Link, which is the next evolution of Dragon Link. So we're very excited about the build on the Dragon Link franchise. This is a new um, maths package, new signage package, new inter integrated game. So very, very excited about that. Obviously, we're up to season two of the NFL. Um, so we've just finished the first season. We're up to season two with some new games coming out from the NFL. And then we'll have a wide um, number of games across class two, LATAM, Europe, Asia Pacific and Australia. So there'll be a lot of games there for people to see plus our CX business, and obviously it's an opportunity to show what Aristocrat Interactive looks like as part of the interactive business with the NEO, our CX business coming together as a, as a solution for our customers. So, you know, we're very excited about uh, the next couple of days. And we didn't talk too much about interactive, but that's another, been another big part of your growth story. Yeah, so, um, you know, you've, you've tracked us long enough, you know the, the way it works is we, we take share in our markets and continue to grow organically and then when we see opportunities we use inorganic investment to, to do that. Um, you know, like everyone we've seen the interactive business or the on iGaming business grow significantly over the, next, over the last few years, but still a lot of opportunity to grow. Um, there's only seven states that have iGaming at the moment and 30 plus, nearly 40 with sports. And we see as an opportunity again for our content to go with to our customers and provide a solution for them on a technology basis. So we're very excited about that market, um, see that we can be a good participant in that market. And like I said earlier, we've still got very, very low share. So lots of opportunity to take share and grow. And in, in the United States, at least, I think there's generally a belief that um, uh, I lottery is going to be in every state that has lotteries. It makes, it absolutely makes sense. And it's such a, great product from a from a government's point of view and uh, you know we've seen good rollout of that and the neo team 
had something like about 67 share of the Iowa lottery market. So we see it as a great opportunity and I do think it's uh, every state that has it and it, as this will open up, it'll become a new opportunity for Iowa lottery. E-instance, which is nearly 90% of lotteries and then all obviously draw-based games using the technology as well. Okay, it's a great overview. Anything else, uh, Trevor, you'd like to share? No, no, it's, uh, it's just a very exciting time at Aristocrat. You know, we, we go through these cycles of you know, standout growth and we've been doing that for a number of years and we're now looking at our next wave of very exciting growth for the next five years. And um, you know, there's still more in this, in this, uh, in this company going forward. And, and I guess what one other thought would be when you talk about uh, iGaming, we talk about being acquisitive. There's a, a belief that there's the industry is due for another round of consolidation that there's a lot of small players out there. Uh, I assume, as always, aristocrats in the hunt. Yep, no, we, we subscribe to that thinking and you know, we have a very clear strategy of what we're looking for. We know the gaps and the opportunities within our portfolio and we've got a clear strategy that we will then use M&A to accelerate that. Um, but we are very disciplined around that and we've got a clear focus on what we want to achieve. And there are segments, there are businesses that would be of interest to us from an M&A point of view going forward. Mind you, we're just digesting NEO, but uh, as you say, there is another round of consolidation coming and I think that's fair and we will be part of that. Okay, great. Great overview as always and I look forward to our interview next year when I can begin by asking you, can you continue maintaining this, this phenomenal momentum? We'll get on the front foot and say yes. Okay. And then I'll prove it to you. Sounds great. Thanks, Thank Frank. you, Trevor. Thank you very much.